Hey guys, welcome back to Maple Syrup Tech. Today we're going to be go doing our first product review. So I got in actually a few mice lay in the last few weeks and we're going to start looking at them one by one. Today we're going to look at the first one which in my opinion is one of the most interesting ones we got. Uh, it's the uh, Logitech G403 uh, Prodigy mouse. Now basically uh, we're going to be looking at the wired version today. It is available also in a wireless version, which is basically the exact same mouse, except you have the option to be able to remove the power cable and use it in a wireless mode. Uh, but honestly, it, the premium on it is pretty high. Just to start with, in Canada, this uh, the wired version has an MSRP of, um, <clears throat> sorry about that guys, $79.99. And the wireless version is $119.99. So a $40 premium for the wireless option uh, seems a little steep to me, which sort of takes out the value of the mouse. Uh, in the US, the MSRP on the wired version is $69.99, and it's $99.99 for the uh, wireless version. Still a $30 uh, you know, a premium for the wireless version. And to be honest with you, for anyone that's a serious gamer that does long sessions, you're gonna probably wind up using the mouse 80% of the time with the wired version anyway. I myself have a wired um, Razer mouse as my main mouse and I wind up using it, the, I'd say even 90% of the time wired, just cause you get better response times and you um, less mouse lag. Uh, when you use it in the wired version and also the battery life no matter how good the mouse is uh, For long gaming sessions will never be enough So we're going to take a look really quick at what comes in the box with the uh, G403 so um, Basically in the box you get obviously the mouse and you also get a 10 gram added weight Which is something really fun to see in this category of mouse because usually the option to add or remove weights come with more expensive mice so it's really fun that logitech included it in one of their entry level mice and also the most interesting feature about the mouse that uh, really attracted me to it is that it is the lowest mouse available with the um the pixar 3366 sensor which is uh, one of the best gaming sensors you can get for your mouse. It's the Logitech version of the 3360, basically. The 3366 is only in Logitech mouse, and it's a deal they have with Pixar where they get to mo you know, modify the sensor a little bit to fit exactly what they need for their models. Um, and basically, the advantage of this is you have a choice between 200 to 12,000 DPI, which uh, there are some mice out there that go to 16,000 DPI, but honestly, even at 12,000, I personally don't know who games at 12,000 DPI because the response is just too crazy on screen. But nonetheless, the options are there. So from 200 to 12,000 DPI, uh, there's customizable software as well, as well as a PCB on the mouse to keep your uh, basic settings saved when you carry the mouse around. So all appreciated features in a not too expensive package. Because normally these kind of features generally start at around 100 bucks on mice, especially if you go look at Razer, like you to get really the whole. Um, all of these, this feature set with this quality of sensor, generally you're looking at the uh, at least at least twenty dollars more on average. So uh, it was it's really interesting. We're going to be testing it out today. So uh, keep following, and we're going to start with a close up on the mouse. Look at the physical features of the mouse. Then we're going to look at uh, the performance a little bit in games and do a couple of tests to see how it comes out. So uh, I'll catch you guys back. So here we are with a close up look. If you look at the design on the mouse, it's a pretty standard design, nothing too crazy. Uh, but honestly, I appreciate it because sometimes having crazy mouse designs is actually feels weird in hand. This mouse actually feels really good in your hand, especially if you use a claw grip. Since it's a shorter but beefier design, it really fits well with someone who holds the mouse in a claw grip like I do. And the buttons I appreciate are really pretty tight and responsive. So there's no mushiness to either of the click buttons. It's very well. And what's, what I also like about this mouse, contrary to some other Logitech designs, is it's a clicky scroll wheel. Uh, some of their scroll wheels are sort of a, a free flow design where you don't actually feel the clicks when you roll the scroll wheel. But this one, you feel them. It's not, uh, overly, it's not overly strong clicks, but you at least know how many times you've rotated the scroll wheel when you're, when you're using it. Uh, they also have a center button here, which you can uh, program to whatever desires you like. I often using it to sw swift through DPIs on the fly. 
and on the side you have a two button design so the buttons are easily accessible I do find however personally I would have maybe pushed them ahead uh, forward a half inch because the back button you do sort of have to twist your thumb a lot to go back and, and get it or what they could have done is just shorten the buttons between them and ha pushed it up a little bit shorten the button have the second bu button start more towards the front but other than the, that the design is pretty well thought out you also have on the reverse side where you can install the uh, the extra weight and it's actually a really simple design you have a little uh, indication on which side you are supposed to press down so you press down which basically lets you remove the little puck underneath you install the weight in the puck and it's all held in by magnets and you replace it so it's a really easy uh, use for installing the weight and at that point you have a little bit more um, you know, a little bit more response, a little more uh, friction when you're using the mouse. Personally, I like it better with the weight in, so that's how I'm going to be testing the mouse. I will, I'll be testing it both ways, but most of the gameplay is going to be done with the added weight. So, uh, there you have the close-up look of the Logitech mouse. And also, sorry, forgot to mention, it's a braided cable, which once again is appreciated. Gives you a little bit more, uh, generally, uh, lifetime use on the mouse. And also, it's uh, aesthetically more pleasing than having a, a sort of rubbery uh, finish on the, on the cord. So overall, pretty nice design. I gotta tell you, for, for, for design purposes, Logitech did a pretty good job with the mouse. So uh, there we go. Now we're gonna switch over to uh, the, the uh, so now we're gonna take a quick look at the user interface. So it's actually pretty easy to install, available from the Logitech website. It takes about a minute or two to download. It does require, however, a restart of your computer. So be aware that once you install it, before it actually becomes uh, active, you're gonna have to restart. So there's a few simple options. It's really easy to use. You have the choice of here and have the auto detection of games or using the onboard memory and, and manually tuning your mouse. I personally always use the onboard memory because the auto game tuning uh, generally doesn't always m fit with your exact needs. Um, after that, the options are pretty simple. So if you start in here, you have the option to switch whatever you want. So you can program the two buttons on the side. You can reprogram your click buttons. Uh, you can even you know program something to the to the scroll wheel as well and by default you have the dpi cycling set to the middle which is what i use it for anyway and you also can set the number of levels you want in your dpi cycle here uh, basically and uh, individually you can set each level to whatever you use so if you never play at 400 you can just eliminate this one or replace it with another level you use it's actually pretty simple and pretty straightforward to use uh, for the options for uh, controlling the lighting you have it's basically it's once again it's pretty straightforward and simple you have the option of turning on or off the logo on or off the scroll wheel as well as choosing a uh, lighting effect which is actually color slicing or breeding uh, after that you have the brightness control and you have the rate which you know acceleration for the breeding effect or cycling or whatnot you also have an option where if you're not using the mouse it will turn off the lighting automatically after a certain amount of time um, which is useful if you're on a laptop or something to save on battery life but you know ultimately if you're playing on a laptop you can also just turn off the lighting altogether which will save you a lot of battery life uh, but these are the options. Um, lastly here, you, you can actually tune your mouse to the type of service you're using. So you, uh, whichever, if you're playing with a mouse pad, if you're playing, there are already presets for Logitech mouse pads, but you can, you can add any new surface and you can tune it. So if you're playing directly on your, uh, your desk or if you actually use a mouse pad, you can change the settings for that. And lastly, you have an analysis of which keys you use most often, which is something that can be fun to look at, but probably not much actual use in real life. Um, now I've got to say, it's a pretty simple and easy to use software. However, at the same time, it's sort of the what's always been lacking in Logitech, because I personally use... Um, Razer products as my main products right now. I've tried many Logitechs, and the only thing I would say is 
I would in, I would encourage them to reinvest in their software and get it a little more uh, fleshed out, if you will. Uh, if you've ever used a Razor product, you have the option often to have multiple profiles, meaning that you can actually pre-program. Uh, for example, I have 12 profiles, one for each of the major games I play, which basically by the click of a mouse, I can reset all my buttons without have to manually be doing the tuning each time. Uh, in Log With Logitech, there's not really that option. You can come and change them at any time, but you sort of have to redo it every time you're changing games, which unfortunately is a little, uh, you know, disappointing. So although their, their software is really easy to use, uh, they, in my opinion, they would be well served to invest a little bit, relook it, just if, because if they want to be recognized as one of the major gaming uh, companies for, for mice and keyboards, uh, that's something that really they, the, the options are a little bit too basic on their end. Even the lighting effects, they have just to basically cycling or breeding. Uh, if you've ever owned any of the high-end razor mice or whatnot, you often have at least four or five options. You, have, uh, you can actually tune each section independently and whatnot and things like that. So uh, although the software is easy to use, so just as a conclusion, it's, even though it's easy to use, it's maybe a little bit too simplistic for the moment. But overall, it's functional, it works, and within five minutes, you'll be set up in gaming. So thank you guys. Now we're going to go look at the actual gaming performance. I've got you in my sights. I love this. I Get over here and heal up. Enemy contact. And stay down. Get out of my way or I'll run you over. So here we are guys with the conclusion. Overall, Logitech has delivered a really good mid-range gaming mouse because this is what I would consider it a mid-range gaming mouse. Uh, you know, up to $50, I consider it an entry level. At 100, I consider it high level gaming mouse. 
If we're going with the corded version, that means that it's a it would be a mid-range gaming mouse. Uh, and basically, if we go with the wireless version, it actually falls into the high-end uh, gaming mouse. And that's the problem, is that this is a very solid product for a mid-range gaming mouse. But the wireless version, since there's no difference other than the wireless option, it really doesn't fit into the uh, high-end gaming mouse category. I mean, the responsiveness is excellent. The sensor is excellent. Uh, the feel in hand is very good. But overall, there are lacking some options for me to consider it a real high-end mouse. Like I said, some of the customization options, although they're very easy, are very basic. Um, and, you know, ultimately, uh, if you're going to be playing an FPS game, this is a perfect mouse for it. But if you're going to be playing a strategy, a uh, MOBA, or even uh, like, you know, World of Warcraft, uh, you're going to want more than just two buttons often on your mouse just because there are a couple of actions that you like to have at the at the press of a thumb. And, you know, although you can ult you can ultimately play those games with a good keyboard and this, uh, you know, mobile players that want a specialized mouse are going to be looking for a mouse with, you know, slightly more options or buttons than this one. But... You know, on the other end, you get to customize the weight, whether you like with or not without the weight, which is something we don't often see in this range of mouse, which is why, like I said, for the wired version, it is a really good buy. However, for the wireless version, I find that the difference in price is a little too high. If it was 10, 15, or maybe even 20 bucks more, it could maybe pass, but at 40 bucks more in Canada and 30 bucks US for the wireless version, um, I would pass on the wireless version. However, I would pick up the corded. If you're in the budget, if you're in the, if you're looking for a mouse, you're not willing to spend more than a hundred dollars, but you still want something that's going to perform, you know, solidly in anything you're going to play. Uh, do pick up the uh, Logitech G403. It is a very good mouse. Uh, we're going to be looking at some high end and we're going to be look at its direct competition, which is, in my opinion, the death adder from Razer uh, in the next couple of weeks. But ultimately, so far for a first review, I am pleasant, uh, you know, I'm pleasantly pleased with the product. There are some things that need to be improved, but hey, that's going to be the same for anything we're going to look at. So I hope you guys like this product review. Let me know in the comments down below if there's anything else you guys would like to see and I'd like to know about the mouse. Oh yes, one last thing before we leave. Um, the mouse plays excellently in all surfaces, but it does not work on glass, by the way. If you look, if you have a glass table and you don't play with a mouse pad, the sensor does not pick up on a glass surface. So that is something to note about this mouse. Uh, it's something I'm be, gonna be specifying about all the mouse, because I used to have a glass desk and it used to, you know, I although I, I generally use a mouse pad, I wanted to know that, you know, if I really needed to, it would work without it. And unfortunately, this one does not. But other than that, uh, it's a very solid product. And like I said, if you have any other comments, anything else you would like to know about the mouse, leave them in the comments down below. If not, I'll see you guys next time.